Clinavel recently released results from his first ever study on his drug of amelanotide in patients diagnosed with arterial ischemic stroke or AIS. I would like to walk you through the results of the study, CUV801, what this means in practice for patients' lives and the next steps in our stroke program. To run a clinical program, you must formulate a scientific rationale, the why of the approach. For a famelanotide in stroke, this comes from a number of observations, data and evidence from clinical use and wider research. To stay ahead of the competition in the industry, we can only reveal some of these pieces. The melanocortin receptors, suitable for a famelanotide to bind to, can be found in several regions of the brain, such as the hypothalamus, thalamus, brainstem, hippocampus, and vascular tissues. In acute stroke, the brain becomes rapidly swollen due to the accumulation of water and ions, followed by a disruption of the blood-brain barrier for approximately 48 hours. The accumulation of immune cells and molecules afterwards contributes to the progression of brain injury and accumulation of reactive oxygen species. This sequel of injuries leads to cell death, the core, and a peripheral area with reduced blood flow, the penumbra, with the risk of delayed death through inflammatory and programmed cell death pathways. In simple terms, the deprivation of oxygen to the brain leads to a cascade of injuries which, if not resolved swiftly, can often lead to irreversible damage and can be life-threatening. Targeting inflammation and apoptosis may rescue part of the viable brain tissue in the penumbra. Melanocortins have been studied for years due to their neuroprotective and anti edematous or anti-oncotic characteristics. Several observations during the development of our clinical program with afamelanotide and clinical evidence captured to date suggest that melanocortins could be investigated further in patients following acute brain injury. In order to develop drugs and mitigate or reduce risks for patients, Clinovel's hallmark is to work backwards, focusing first and foremost on safety. This is even more relevant when working with patients in acute and life-threatening phase as it is stroke. The CUV801 study was designed to study the safety of afamelanotide in patients experiencing moderate stroke with a clot lodged in an artery in the mid or higher region of the brain. This study is of utter importance for the clinical program and as such, was endorsed by the Australasian Stroke Trials Network. One of the major concerns with these patients is that at any time they could suffer a second fatal stroke, as we tragically saw with one of the patients enrolled in the study. In other words, in assessing the drug's effectiveness, we entered a clinical domain where life is at stake every minute following stroke. The six patients enrolled in CUV801 all had a medical history of cardiovascular complications, and the focus on drug-to-drug -drug interactions was also of particular relevance. The data we have now are the first of a series, but the strong observation made is that afamelanotide has been well tolerated by these patients. This is the first time that has been shown anywhere in the world. Secondary endpoints focused on neurological functionality. The NIHSS tool is specific for stroke and gives a measure of overall neurological function and impairment in stroke patients and can be used over time to assess recovery. As a rule of thumb, a four-point improvement in NIHSS scores after a stroke is significant and a three-point improvement is considered clinically meaningful. This means that patients regain abilities which positively improves their lives. Four of the six patients enrolled showed a significant improvement, and five of the six patients enrolled saw at least a three-point improvement over 42 days, with two patients completing the study with no symptoms. 
Whilst we must note that this is an open-label study and no comparator was used, as this was a first human study, these results are nonetheless most encouraging, as we are striving to develop a treatment for patients who lack alternatives, and which ultimately enable independent living post-stroke. Clinical imaging also helps us understand patients' recovery. We measure reperfusion of the brain and resupply of oxygen to the critically affected region. We so again, improvement on the MRI scans in five of the six patients enrolled. Safety data gives us the comfort to progress our stroke program, while the efficacy endpoints seen to date must now be further investigated. The next stroke study, CUV-803, will take the learnings from CUV-801 and our understanding of the potential of melanocortin drugs like afamelanotide and conduct a study using a higher dose frequency and higher dose of apamelanotide in stroke. We expect this study to start in the second half of 2022, once we receive the final approvals needed for the protocol from regulatory authorities and ethics bodies. We look forward to updating you in the upcoming months.